What's cracking like it, everybody? My name is my guy, Matt Pauly here, hailing to you from the Breakers Hotel here in Palm Beach, Florida. Unbelievable spot. I'm a oh. If there is a spot that most multi-millionaires, deca-millionaires, and billionaires love to stay at, boom, it's right there. It's called the Breakers. Uh, amazing history here. Uh, been around since really the late 1800s. The gentleman that I've been reading up a lot about since I've been here was a gentleman named Henry Flagler. A lot of people know about Rockefeller, but a lot of people don't know about his business partner, Flagler. A lot of people here in Florida do, but an industrialist and was a partner with the Rockefellers for a company called Standard Oil was basically the Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk's uh, of their era. And uh, he's talking about the ma massive amounts of wealth these guys created. Unbelievable. Anyway, I have a little bit of cup of joe here. <clears throat> I want to ask you guys a question. What life did you sign up for? What life did you sign up for? I mean, the life I ended up with when I was growing up was, was an average and ordinary kid raised in the Berwyn Cicero Stickney area of, 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 of Chicago. And I'm thinking to myself, was I thinking anywhere close to where I'm thinking right now as an adult, as a kid, did I have aspirations to become wealthy? Did I have aspirations to actually create wealth? Did I have aspirations uh, uh, <coughs> to, to experience the finest things that life has to offer? And my answer to that, honestly, was no. I mean, I was just thinking about graduating high school. I was just thinking about what my next move was six inches in front of my face, not necessarily what the next move was for the rest of my life. I wasn't thinking that big. I wasn't thinking that like I was going to do something special. I know I was special, but I wasn't thinking I was going to do anything special. Uh, I didn't have the pedigree. I didn't have the right uh, uh, aptitude for school. Um, I just knew I, I was somebody special. I wanted to do something special, but I don't know exactly what it was and how I was going to express it. Uh, until my first opportunity was to enlist into the Marine Corps, where really Uncle Sam gave me a shot, gave me a shot to understand who I was, to, to build not only my physical body, but also build my character, build my spirit, build mental toughness uh, through my eight years in the Marine Corps. Um, but after the Marine Corps, another area of mental toughness had to be imposed, which is being a single father. That was another battle I had to fight. But along the way, I was just always stuck in survival mode, stuck in just getting by, stuck in just paying the bills, stuck in a mindset like, I could put food on the table and roof over our head, that type of mentality, instead of just taking another six inches or foot or five feet, six feet, 10 feet past that, instead of just thinking about the first move, think about the next five, 10, 15, 20 moves of my life. And when I, I'm around the country and, uh, and, and, and we're just really coming here because we had a conversation yesterday, we had, we had experience yesterday with the president of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. And uh, he talked about his campaign. He talked about what he's doing with America, making America great, keeping America great, uh, who he's going up against in the, uh, the Democratic Party. Uh, he talked about, the, by the way, no, no press, uh, no, 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 no press passes, no news. It was at Mar-a-Lago, which is right up the street here. It was at Mar-a-Lago, uh, his, his, uh, his country club, which is basically the, the finest country club in the world. And uh, Secret Service all over the place. The sheriffs are around. The law enforcement, all it just it was just shut down. Anyway, make a long story short. I'm looking. I'm looking in the back. I'm looking at his sons, Eric Trump. I'm looking at his sons, uh, uh, Donald Trump Jr. I'm looking at Kimberly. I'm looking at these three and how much they adore their father and father-in-law. I'm looking at how his family members look at him. Uh, listen, regardless if you are a supporter of Trump or not, that's not the point. The point is this. I mean, he's created something, he's leveraged something that his kids will be able to use for the rest of their lives and their kids' kids will be used for the rest of their lives. He stepped up and leveled up his game. And I'm not so sure if he was 
willing to sign up for because there's many reports and he, you've seen it on TV that he wasn't going to think about being president of the United States. And I know people have talked to you about whether or not you want to run. Would you Would you ever? Probably not. Point of this conversation for you not to be the president of the United States, but to ask you a question, what life did you sign up for? And along the way, if you needed to make bigger decisions along the way, what life do you continue to sign up for? What life will you continue to achieve and hope for? Because lots of times a couple of things go through your mind. Man, you know, uh, I don't want to work so hard, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's not worth it. You know, regret, you know, miss time with your family, your children. <clears throat> but I'm telling you something, man. The look that Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump gave their father, and I'm sure they've heard of his entire, their entire life, the same rhetoric over and over and over and over again. And, but look what that rhetoric has got. I think Mark Zuckerberg mentioned that he's the number one character right now the number one profile on social media, our president. And so when I'm asking myself, am I living my best life possible? Am I living a situation where my children can look up at me, not with regret, but with inspiration and wow, that's my dad, that's my DNA. That's the example I have in my life. Or am I just settling? And uh, you know, chill, have a good life. Bro, I mean, listen, I mean, I'm, I'm hanging around these places where it's $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 a night to stay at. And these people are also having the same conversations too as well. And back to Henry Flagler, these people are living what they call old money. They're living off old money. In other words, somebody in four, five, six generations beforehand made a great decision to do something big. And as you're watching this video, maybe that's you. Maybe you say, you know what? If it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm the leader of my family. I'm gonna start creating generational. But guess what? The first one in the family, it goes through that wall, guess what happens to them? They get punched in the face. So anyway, make a long story short, guys. You, th you think about your next move. I mean, if you want to be the godfather, if you want to be the godfather of your family, I mean, <laughs> the weirdest thing, speaking of having a godfather experience, we're having lunch yesterday with Patrick Ben David and, and uh, my mentor, our CEO, PHB agency, of, of course, my, my fellow colleagues, business partners. And to the left, they just sits down to go eat, is Robert Duvall. Remember the guy, remember the counsel of the Godfather family in the movie, The Godfather? Him, Tom, the attorney. Yeah, Robert Duvall sat right next to us. And these are the conversations that are being made to advance legacies, to advance wealth, to advance enterprise, to advance potentially your last name. I know for sure that in my family, I want to be sure that the life that they sign up for, if they choose to, they can accomplish 10, times more than what I, was able to start off with. Why? Because I gave them a financial and an economic base. I'm surrounded here with people that have been so confident with their finances for generations. And their children, they have a different confidence about themselves at three, four, five, even six, seven years old. I'm looking, watching these kids run around the breakers here, jumping in a pool, going to the beach. I'm looking at the amount of confidence that they have. I mean, the, the room here had magnificent ballrooms. You know what cool part is? In a few months here, we're gonna have a retreat with some of our key leaders of a company. But anyway, back to what life did you sign up for? I wanna encourage you to think bigger. I want to encourage you to actually have an answer for that question. What life did you sign up for? Just getting by or living your best life and being challenged to the best life possible? If, if there's anything I learned from being around Kobe Bryant, if there's anything I learned about being around Michael Jordan, if there's anything I learned about being around President of the United States of America, is that all three of them were challenging everybody around them to be better. Are you surrounding yourself with people that challenge you to be better? Are there people you're surrounding yourself with, are they challenging you to become better? Or you're around people that are challenging you just to chill and settle and be okay, another day, another dollar. That type of conversations. That's the life I signed up for. I think many of you didn't either. So with that being said, guys, from the Breakers Hotel, I wanna know your answer to this question. Drop it in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so already, please follow our channel, Seven Figure Squad here on YouTube. And if you are on Instagram, find me at Money Smart Guy. Same thing too with Facebook at Money Smart Guy. I'm gonna go back here to the Breakers, enjoy some brunch. I'm gonna think about you guys. What life did you sign up for? Drop it in the comment section below. Appreciate you. And until we meet again, I'm your Money Smart Guy. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.